on YouTube. Long time no see. Jay here with Homebrewed Vapes. I told you guys that I was going to show you how to build some uh, higher ohm coils for some of the lower wattage devices out there. Um, so what I think I'm going to make today is it's going to be a twisted coil and it's going to be kind of like an agro coil except a little bit of a twist. I'm going to be using uh, 28 gauge canthal, some 0.8 by 0.1 millimeter flat ribbon wire and what we're going to do is we're going to sandwich that flat ribbon wire in between a 28 gauge, give it some capillaries, some places to hold some juice, make a good flavor build, still a higher ohm, and uh, should be a good vape. So let's dive down. I'll show you guys how to build this thing. Okay, well, I've already showed you guys how to straighten out your canthal, so I'm not going to waste time doing that because I know my videos get kind of long and I'm trying to shorten them down just a little bit. So give you an idea of what's going to happen here. I got my two pieces of canthal here. Let me try to zoom in. And then here's my flat ribbon wire. And basically what I'm going to be doing is sticking this right in between the two of these, chucking them in the drill, and uh, twisting them up. So I'll get that set up. Be right back. Okay, guys. So I'm going to turn some light on here, maybe make it a little easier to see here. What I've got. zoom in here just for a second so I've got my flat ribbon wire my two pieces of canthal and what I'm doing is just kind of sliding it in between the two here and what we're going to be doing is actually instead of holding it at the end to spin it up like normal I'm going to have to use the pliers to hold it in place and kind of slide it down the wire like that while it's spinning. And you got to take this nice and easy and slow because what will happen is <clears throat> you'll end up spinning it too tight and breaking the wire if you go too fast. So let me zoom out and we'll start her on it. Try to keep the wires in place here. Not a very easy one, but just get it going nice and slow. These guys are trying to kick out on me, so there we go. cut this other wire off at the end here because it's a little too long back tight here All right. You can see this. Let me try to zoom in on this wire here. I'll turn the light off. Maybe you can see a little bit better. But basically, it's kind of like a tiger coil. It's a little harder to do, but still puts out some good flavor. So let's finish spinning it up. Let me 
All right. Let's stop it right there. All right, we're done with the drill. So now we're going to cut this end off here. For this one, I'm going to be using a 2.5 millimeter screwdriver. Now, take some light on here. Leave a little bit of leg on there. do a six wrap on this guy here and I'm going to install this in the mutation X tighten her up cut the excess off we'll cut this side kind of short because I want to try to get another coil out of it Slide in and check the ohms and see what we got here. And it's going to be pretty much like every other coil as far as centering it goes. Nice and tight. Cut off your excess. All right. Try to get it centered up nice and tight in the middle there. And let's see what we got. 0.46. I'm sure that's going to change a little bit once we fire it up. Alright, so we got her installed. Let's give her a fire, see how she looks. Glowing nice and even from the center out. Fires up pretty quick. Now on the on the uh Segele, it's saying 0.5 ohms, 40 watts. Let's take her off. Put her on the ohm reader. We'll see exactly what we're getting now. God, these things got some screws on them. There's some threads. Okay. 0.52 ohms. So 0.52 should be able to vape that at about, I'd say at least 30 watts, 35 watts, and have a good vape on it. So. Let's wick her up, put some juice on it, see how she vapes. Okay, so I finally did it. They finally talked me into going Japanese cotton. So I got some Kogendo or Kogendo, however it's pronounced. And I've been trying to use it. And to be honest with you, I haven't really noticed a big difference between this and the organic cotton that I've been using. But... I haven't really got to spend some quality time with it and find out if it's just a matter of juicing more efficiently, better flavor, or, you know, just holding more juice. But that's something that's going to take a little bit of time. So, okay, so I thinned it up a little bit, took a little off of it because it was a little too tight on a first pass. There we go. That's better. Because with this type of wick, or this type of coil, I should say, 
you don't want it tight. You don't need it tight. All right. Juice it up and let's see what we get. All right, now that is at 40 watts. So, like I said, I wanted to make something that we could do a little lower wattage vaping style with. So we're going to take it to 25 watts to start out with. Because I know there's a lot of 30 watt, 30 watt devices out there. But... She still fires. A little weak, but we'll try it out. So, I'm going to cap it up. Take it back up top. We'll vape on it for a minute. All right, guys. So we're going to start this out at 25 watts because some of the 30-watt uh, boxes out there, you know, you want something that you can vape not at full blast the whole time. But I don't think you're going to be able to see this because my camera really does suck. But just take my word for it. This is 25 watts. And for 25 watts, that's a pretty good amount of vapor. The flavor is there. It's a kind of a cool vape, um, a pretty cool vape, actually. But you did get some good flavor with it. Uh, now, if you want to take it up to 30 watts, we'll take 30. Maybe. Oh, come on. All right, 30 watts. It's actually a really good vape. That is something that I would probably vape and be happy with all day long. I mean, I like a warmer vape, just me, but I could still be happy with that. So we're going to take this now into the iStick 50 and the Segele 50 watt range. So we'll take it to 45 watts, show you what that would be like. big ramp up that's where you're getting into your warmer vape a lot more flavor increase vapor production top top notch flavor production vapor production sorry <laughs> all right let me sit back here give you guys the full view all right 45 watts that's 4.8 volts And that is a good vape. So we'll run up to 50 watts. I'm going to run through these pretty quick because I want to try to keep the video a little shorter. Because like I said, I know my videos run long. So there's 50 watts, 5 volts. Really good. That is actually a really good vape. Um, and I'm going to say a really good vape from the majority of vapors out there. I myself, I like a warm to hot vape. <clears throat> I like the dense flavor. That's my style of vaping. Uh, but I know there's a lot of people out there that they just, they want a good flavor. They want a, just a, you know, a nice little warm vape. And that's what they're happy with. And to each their own, you know, if that's how you like vaping, that's how you like vaping. I'm not pushing anything. Anyway. Uh, but anyway, so for like the iStick 50s, the Segele 50 watt, and some of the other 50 watt devices out there, this is also a build you could use for that to get a good flavorful and a good vapor production um, on your device. 
Now, whenever you have something like um, the Smoke X Pro M80, we will take this up to 80 watts. 6.4 volts, 80 watts. And like I said, I doubt you're going to be able to see this, but we'll try it one more time. Let's see. Camera sucks. All right. But I'm going to reduce this before I do that because 80 watts is probably going to, because you'll see how fast this fires. Pretty quick. And I don't feel like any dry hits today. Dry hits are bad. <laughs> and by the way, that's all nine holes open that I've been vaping on so far. Um, and I will tell you, like whenever you're 25, 30, anywhere between 25 and 50 watts, I can close this down to three holes and it, it increases the flavor output because you don't need that much airflow with that low wattage of a vape. And there's your 80 watts. And that's 6.5 volts. But more than likely, a lot of you guys be vaping, I'd say between 60 and 70 watts on that. So there's 60 watts right there. And I'm going to take this back down because, like I said, I had the air holes all the way open. So we'll go down to 40 watts. I'll close off the air holes and show you what that output is like go down to three air holes out of the nine and like I said that is 40 watts 4.5 volts still a great vape and like I said the flavor jumps on it because you're getting a more concentrated uh, dose of the flavoring I mean it's just you don't need that much airflow Unless you just want it, but if you're wanting a little more uh, flavor production, that's the way to go as far as I'm concerned. So here's six holes. But that's it there, guys. And for, like, uh, if, if you've got a 20-watt device, I think like the MVP2, I think it's a 20-watt device. With this coil, you could actually do like a 9 wrap, which I think would put it up about, um, I think, 0.9 ohms, maybe 1 ohm, something like that. And with 9 wraps, you could vape it at 20 watts all day long, have battery for days, and still get a really great uh, vape out of it, good production you know, on the clouds, and great flavor. So as far as the build goes, you just adjust it to you know, what you're wanting to um, vape at. You know, just add a few wraps to it or whatever. But that's the beauty of these regulated devices, like I said. Turn it up and down wherever you want it at to get the kind of vape you're looking for. But as far as the coil goes, the coil, the reason why I like the twisted coil builds, and I've said this in some of my other videos, is it holds more juice, so therefore you're going to get a more concentrated flavor. You're going to get great vapor production because the juice is right there on the coils. And it wicks really well. So, I mean, for a flavor build and a vapor production build, cloud chasing build, if you want to call it that even, um, these twisted builds, you can't really go wrong with them. You know, they're just great, great coil builds to do. And that's just my personal opinion, but that's what I'm showing you guys. Now, as far as a sneak peek I got, a sneak peek for you on a review I'm going to be doing. <clears throat> Brian did this review already on the Vapor Chronicles. And then uh, I didn't really see much after that because of the Chinese New Year. You know, we couldn't really get this in. But I do have the new Star sub-tank. The, free, the Freemax Star. Got it in yesterday and been vaping on it ever since. I mean, I haven't really put it down uh, except for to do this video <laughs> to do the build on that one. But this thing here, I vape this at 40 watts. And that is 4.6 volts. It's a 0.5 ohm coil. Um, but just to kind of give you guys a little teaser. Vapor production is crazy on this thing. The flavor <clears throat> is outstanding. Um, I have vaped on the Kanger Tech Subtank Mini, the um, Atlantis 
the Spire Atlantis version 1. I haven't done the version 2 yet. I want to try that one. The uh, Delta 2, which I had, which I did a review on. I still love that tank, but to be honest with you, so far, this thing kicks that thing's ass. Um, and then the Limo. Now, the Limo is a great tank also. That thing is an awesome flavor producer. And it's a good cloud producer also. But in my taste, my opinion, I really think this one even beats that out also. Now, like I said, the Aspire Atlantis version 2. <clears throat> really want to try that thing out. Um, as far as I've, from what I've heard, that thing is top notch also. But I think whenever, you know, in this point in the game, as far as the sub tanks go, you really can't go wrong on a lot of these sub tanks that are just coming out because they're all going to be giving you that flavor and the vapor production. But for me, the only downside on this that I have seen so far is the threads for the tank where it meets the base are kind of janky um, the machining on it wasn't that great from what I can tell just getting the thread started let me kind of show you see if you guys can hear this or not but very grindy feeling and I've checked and the threads are clean that's the only con that I've seen so far with this thing um, that and the coil, when I first put the coil head in there, I primed it, uh, filled the tank up, took some primer puffs on there, and then started vaping on it. And there was a, kind of a funky taste to it there for a while. And it is a, um, a organic cotton coil. So, I mean, there's no silica, there's no um, any of the other uh, materials that are in some of these other tanks. This is 100% organic cotton in here, but for some reason it just had a weird taste to it. But it, after about, I think it was about 15 or 18 pulls on it, that taste went away and, you know, I can just taste my juice now. But An awesome thing about this is this is a 0.5 ohm coil head. It came with a 0.25 ohm coil head also and the spare glass. But the place that I bought it from was actually on eBay and they sent me two more coil heads with it for free. Well, included with it. And the reason why I say for free is I only paid uh, $39.99 for this on eBay. Now I'm always skeptical about buying from eBay because <clears throat> you never know if you're getting authentic. You never know what you're getting pretty much. But the place that I got it from, I will put a link in the description from the eBay store that I got it from. Um, but I'll do that in the video. Uh, well actually I'll go ahead and put it in this video. I'll put the link to it in this video. Just that so anybody who's wanting to go check them out they can check it out. But so far Loving this tank. Uh, I'm going to vape on this thing probably for two or three weeks before I put out a review video. I want to really see, I want to see how long these coil heads last. And also, I want to burn this coil head out. That's so I can do a build on it. Um, I know these don't come with an RBA section. And they don't make one yet. But from what I understand, the Aspire Atlantis version 1 RBA will fit this tank. And I do want to get one of those. But I also want to try rebuilding this coil head because uh, from doing the Delta II coil head, it really doesn't look like it's going to be that bad on this one. So I think it's very doable and it actually I think it's going to be pretty simple to be honest with you on this one here. So I will do a coil build on this coil head once it goes out, give you a review on this tank. Um, and I know I'm spending too much time telling you about this right now, but just kind of want to give you a heads up of what I may be putting out here pretty soon. And as far as the link between the videos that I've been putting out, I apologize about that. It's been a very, very busy few weeks for me. And uh, I had mentioned something about that in my last video about some stuff going on. But I do apologize. I'm going to try to get back into doing these videos. But here's the first one that I've got out for you guys. And I will have another one following shortly on some other builds. Um, also, the Kogendo or Kogendo, however you pronounce it, Japanese cotton that I got in. I want to do a comparison between that and the organic cotton once I get a feel for it and try to figure out exactly what the differences are between them. Uh, because to tell you the truth, I really haven't noticed any difference other than building with my organic cotton is a hell of a lot easier than building with this Japanese cotton so far. Just my opinion, but I haven't had a whole lot of time to play with it yet. So let me play with it a little bit longer and I'm going to put out a comparison video on that also. But in the meantime, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed it. To all my subscribers out there, thank you so much for subscribing. Guys, thanks for watching. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Mike Vapes, thanks so much for uh, mentioning me on your channel. And guys, check Mike Vapes out. Also, check out Brian on the Vapor Chronicles and Butt Kickers. 
Those guys have got their own show going. It's called The Vape Team. It's on uh, Vape TV. Really great show. They got some guests on there every once in a while, whatever. But uh, nice, entertaining show. And it's also very uh, informative. Those guys put together, they know their shit. Um, and the only reason I push those guys is I really do truly believe that if you're wanting a good, honest opinion and review of the products that are out there, they're going to give it to you. Um, I'm going to, you know, I try to do the same, but as far as the vape game goes, those guys have been doing a little bit longer. I am new to doing these videos, but, and you know, and the equipment that I've got sucks ass, but it is going to get better. And I told you guys that I'm, I'm looking for a camera, but right now that is just not my budget. So for now, this is what we got. And I apologize about that, but, um, definitely check those guys out. And as far as, uh, any ideas, if you guys want to see anything, let me know. Post, uh, post below. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, leave a comment in the section below there. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed what you see. And until next time, you guys take care and uh, I'll catch you later.